Okay. How many people are new to me? Oh, quite a few. Okay. So we'll talk about, say, how I got here and what I do uh, briefly, and then we'll get into uh, what we're here for, and that's self-healing. Does that sound fair? Just to give you guys an experience or the reason why I'm here. I'm actually a computer programmer, uh, so why am I talking about self-healing? Okay. Uh, it's because I've had, well, a second near-death uh, uh, really opened me up, but let's talk about the first near death because that's where a lot of people are. Uh, and I'll tell you about my abilities as well. Uh, some of you might actually feel a little different already uh, just coming into the room. So why is that? I'll explain, say, the science behind it uh, and what's turned out to be, say, one of the fastest ways to help you transform your life. Okay? So in a nutshell, to get you started, it's like, well, what do I do? You know, if you explained uh, what I did. Uh, I have issues trying to figure out what I do because it's so expansive. It's not just about, you know, giving you better health. Although I'm not a doctor, by the way, I'm, I'm not here to cure you or anything like that. Uh, there's a lot of people who cure themselves uh, of a lot of, say, uh, well, terminal diseases uh, or anything else. But, uh, you know, you get better health-wise, physically, spiritually, relationships, anything under the sun or anything that you call life. Uh, you can shift and transform into a higher order. So I'm not a life coach. I'm not a, uh, I used to be called a success energizer or, you know, a lot of those things and I'm really not. And I figured out, you know, it's like, well, what do I do? You know, what do I really do? And, and really, if, it boil, if you boil it down, uh, I bring or give uh, people hope. You know, I help you reignite those dreams that you had, those dreams of who you could be where a lot of us, as I scan the room again, uh, kind of died inside you and now, uh, as Henry Thoreau put it, you know, kind of living lives of quiet desperation. So uh, I bring you that, reignite you with your dream and then also help you materialize the tools because it's not just about joy. It's not like when you leave here, you know, you're gonna feel good and then you leave here and then you're back into the real world. You'll actually feel the transformations. So I give you the tools, okay? Help you materialize the tools that you need to achieve your dreams. So that's what I do in a nutshell. And for most people, uh, and I have tens of thousands of people throughout the world, uh, you know, that I've helped transform their lives. They even go beyond their dreams. You know, because the dreams are very, say, limited. You know, your life dream might be limited to what could be the possibilities that are out there for you. So I even help you expand that. So let's jump back quickly, and I'll go through the process uh, of why I'm here, why am I, why am I speaking here, uh, and then we'll do a meditation. It's not working out. Well, that's the best I can get, Sudi. Um, so, uh, and then we'll do a meta-healing. And a meta-healing is where I'll guide you into a nice deep state of meditation, and then I'll work on you at your source code, and I'll explain how that works. In reality, you'll actually feel it after we do the meditation. So, uh, in the beginning, okay, uh, my first near-death experience before that, well, I was that individual that always looked for something to answer the question of life, right? That internal, say, knowledge or that internal knowing that we're all looking for. I thought I'd find it in religion. So I scoured the religious books, wasn't really there. I scoured, you know, the spiritual books, weren't really there. Uh, I got well-versed on a lot of religions, but it left a lot of, say, questions unanswered. In fact, it left uh, a ton more questions unanswered because there's a lot of, in. Uh, incongruencies in religion. There's a lot of incongruencies in spirituality. You know, and I come from a computer-based background, which means that, you know, if X, Y doesn't equal Z, right? If it doesn't make sense, show me the proof, uh, it doesn't work for me, okay? It's not about faith. And a lot of you guys have that faith. Well, if I do X, Y, and Z, then I'm guaranteed that heavenly space uh, on the other side. It's not true. Guys, a lot of you are sensing that as well. So, so uh, you know, I moved away from the religious aspect, okay? uh, and then I figured, well, it must be success. And by success, I mean better relationships, right? More money, uh, fame, knowledge. Well, as you can scan, say, the, the tabloids, there's a lot of people who are really successful uh, and they're not really happy. In fact, I work with a lot of millionaires and billionaires 
uh, nowadays, and they, they have the same issues as people who, who aren't that wealthy. So it's not about the money. Okay? Uh, if, you, if you guys think that, well, you know, if I had X amount of money, then I'll be happy, uh, those people do get that X amount of money. It just magnifies, say, the unhappiness that they are. Okay? It magnifies the illnesses that they are, all that. So why didn't that work out? So that, that plan didn't work out for me either. So my first near-death experience really opened me on what actually is that key component that helps us say, ascend higher, or what I call 360 degrees of abundance, okay? So that 360 degrees, let me define it, and then I'll go quickly through my near-death experience, and then we'll get into the self-healing mode, just to bring those new people up to speed. Um, 360 degrees of abundance. Uh, again, say, say, let's just take money, for example, right? You see wealthy people, uh, they have a lot of money, but then what happens, again, they're not healthy. They're not, uh, they're not happy. You know, their relationships are in shambles, okay? That's not 360 degrees of abundance. They've actually figured out, say, that one piece of the pie that makes you abundant, but if you don't have the other pieces, uh, then it's not worthwhile having, right? And a lot of times what's happened is that, well, those people, you've heard the expression, have sold themselves to the devil, okay, right? That's how they've gotten, say, that level of abundance or prosperity. You know, like uh, the Kennedys, uh, the Koch brothers, uh, so on and so on, right? They've sold themselves, maybe not them, but somewhere in their family lineage. You know, that does happen, and I kind of see that. You, some of you have sold yourself for a lot less than what they have. So uh, I can help you with that, by the way. So, so the 360 degrees of abundance is really about you know, having your family life, having, having your relationships, your intimate relationships, having your, say, um, finances in line, having your spirituality, whatever you think spirituality is defined as, that in line. Again, you're ascending all of, all the parts of you that make you your life, ascending to a higher level uh, in completeness, or again, 360 degrees of, uh, of abundance. Okay? Uh, and I'll explain the details or the science on how that works. Uh, and let's just jump back on what that means. So the first near-death experience was a college job, Target Warehouse. I used to work uh, uh, at Target Warehouse. Uh, I had my jaws crushed in a, in, a, in a warehouse accident. It was one of the best experiences that I've had, the first awakening experience that I've had. And what that means is, or why it was one of the best experiences that I've had, is because it allowed me, and I'm sure you've heard stories, where people start to pull away from their physical body, right? Uh, I'm sure you've heard, say, stories of surgeries, right, where they start to float above their physical body and can look down on, say, what the doctors are doing. I pretty much did the same thing. I pulled away from my body, and I saw my body dangling there because I was suspended by my jaws or neck, um, and I could see, okay, uh, well, just stepping back a little bit, uh, I didn't know that I was dead at the time, okay, but I was pulling away, and I was seeing myself from a mere perspective, just getting further and further away. I'm going, my goodness, it doesn't feel like I'm in a mirror, but it feels like my body's over there, and I'm really over here. You know, why is that? And then I realized, like, oh, I'm dead. Okay? Uh, and there wasn't a shock. It wasn't, it wasn't, say, tragic or anything. It was a freeing experience. It's like the truth coming out. Okay? It was qu quite fantastic. And then I noticed that, you know, my body, which actually consists of only 1% of who we are, okay? and then I noticed the 99% of who we truly are. Okay? That 99% is that grandness of who we are, the completeness of who we are, the brilliance of who we are. All those things that you feel deep inside, that's what you're actually looking for. Okay? And that's what I noticed that gives you, again, and that's that one, say, key or one uh, arithmetic equation, okay? that equation that well, physicists are looking at, right, that answers all of life. That's that, say, equation that people are looking for. It's that completeness that we're looking for. Uh, so imagine uh, you guys, or all of us, think that who we are, or if I asked you who you are, you'd go, well, I'm a teacher, I'm a scientist, uh, I do this or I do that, right? You never really, say, understand who you are. You define yourself as a human experience, right? And that's, again, that's very limited. It's 
That's only 1%. The wealth that you, say, try to seek after, the happiness that you try to seek after, again, is all physical. Uh, and again, that's only 1%. That's why you're never satisfied. That's why you're never happy. That's why you, those relationships never work out because you're always seeking something outside of yourself which is just physical. Okay? The happiness or true happiness comes from that 99% that we don't pay attention to. Okay? So you pay 100% or 99% of your attention to solving things at a physical level okay? while the 99% uh, you don't even pay attention to or you don't acknowledge, even if you're spiritual uh, or religious. By the way, I'm not here to uh, misguide you or pull you away from your religion and go try this new religion or try this new spiritual movement. It's nothing about that. So if you are of a spiritual bent, fantastic. If you are of a religious bent, fantastic. Uh, what I do for you, if you are, okay, you get to see the higher order or a pure perspective of what your religion is there for. Okay? So those originators of that religion, you get to see what they truly meant versus the distortion that's come through time, right? through thousands of years of distortion. So, so that was the first near-death experience. I'm not gonna get into all the details, but from that first near-death experience, I went through uh, where you review your life. Uh, and that life review, how many people have heard about life reviews, right? People go, oh, I've been gone through life reviews and so on like that. Uh, in reality, it's not really a life review. Okay? You're not there to go, oh, this piece I did good, I did really good here, I helped people here, but over here, uh, that was a no-no, I shouldn't have done that. And then at the end, you get a scorecard, you know, you go up or down. It's not about that at all. Okay? Uh, imagine it from this way, right? You're living your life uh, at a kindergarten level, Okay? At a base level, you don't understand why things happen to you the way they do. Okay? Again, at a kindergarten level. So the life review is that you've pulled away, you've awakened to your higher self, again, that 99% of what really creates you. Okay? So you see your life from a higher perspective. Right? So you see yourself from a graduate level. So that's a huge difference. Right, between kindergarten and a graduate level. So you relive your life. Again, it's not a review. You relive your life the way it should have been. Okay? To reset all the distortions. All the times you, you probably said, why did I, this happen to me? Why was God so mean to me? Uh, I shouldn't have married this person, you know, uh, and so on and so on. Or I shouldn't have had this accident. Uh, none of that exists. Everything you'll see is in perfect order. Everything you'll see is in grandness. Everything was there to ascend you higher. Okay? Uh, again, you weren't say punished. You're not, it, you're not here to be punished. You're not here uh, as, what do they call, karma. Right? You did something wrong in the previous life. Right? Now you're paying for this life. None of that is true. Okay? Um, so that's what that life review is. Uh, at that time, and again, uh, some of the high points on that, and I know I'm skipping around, but that's okay. Um, the high points of that life review is that, well, one, how did I live, for me, 22 years in, say, a few seconds? Okay? So obviously, time gets distorted, because okay? we are beings of a timeless nature. Again, that 99%. So we can do that. Hey, we can compress time, we can say expand time, we can get into that later if you have questions on it. Sometimes it gets a little too technical, so we'll shy away from that. But, uh, but how does that happen? Okay. By the way, uh, that's how I help you heal yourself, by disconnecting you from the distortion of, of time. Okay. All distortions that you have in your life, <coughs> excuse me, all the lack you have in your life is really time and space distortion. Okay. Uh, if you're completely awakened, again, that 99% of who you are, you'd be in total abundance. Okay? So keep that in mind. As I got pushed back into my body, um, uh, you know, I, I felt the pain, uh, and then I got back into my body, felt the pain, I blacked out, and then the next thing I know, I was in the hospital with uh, my jaws wired shut because my jaws were cracked. So uh, the three months that I spent, fantastic times, Everything was so vivid, because again, I was enjoying myself because I was seeing things from my spirit body. Okay? So fast forward into that second near-death experience, and this is the difference between, say, me 
uh, and a lot of people who have had, say, near-death experiences. In fact, there's about 800 near-death experiences that happen like every day. Okay? So, uh, and those are documented, and that's just in the US. Okay? Why aren't there more people like me? Uh, obviously, they see, say, the brilliance, they see the brilliance on the other side, but why does that distort them? Right? Uh, in fact, if you go to the near-death you know, website, there's actually a hotline, there's a suicide line uh, for people who get distorted from near deaths. Okay? Um, uh, and I can explain that briefly. Uh, the, my two near deaths were actually, say, I was tailored or groomed, so when I had my near death, it catapulted me to higher levels much easier, much faster. Okay? Um, so the second near death, I had a drowning. I got sucked into basically a hole at the bottom of the river. Uh, and I was stuck in there, maybe like, according to my wife, maybe six, eight minutes. Okay? At that level, uh, you've heard of the tunnel of light, right? There's about 13 layers in that, in that tunnel of light. Uh, and then after, say, that tunnel of light, you graduate, okay, and you send into that heavenly space or wherever you go up there. Uh, if you graduated, well, you're not supposed to come back. Okay? Most people who have had a near-death experience, they don't make it to the tunnel of light. They don't, the first layer is like their loved ones coming in, greeting them, welcoming them into that other space, right? Most people don't make it to that level. Um, I managed to go through the tunnel of light. Again, it's more of a processing center to get you acclimated to being out of your body, in your real self. Uh, I managed to cross over past that tunnel of light uh, and I call it, say, the grandness. So beyond the tunnel of light, there's, this, there's a place in time where there is no place in time. Okay? It's just a grandness of who you are. You can be anything, you can transform to any identity, but you don't need to because you are everything that you are. You are all the love that you are, you are all the grandness that you are. It's just a space of beauty and brilliance. Okay? Again, you don't need anything, you don't need any uh, security, because again, you are everything that you are. You don't need any money because you are everything that you are. Um, you can go anywhere that you need to. You can transform into anything that you need to. For example, if you want to go to France, uh, you will, say, be in France, just all, almost like instantly. But at that level, you still have a consciousness of being human, okay? Uh, spirit, in its real sense, there's no definition, okay? You just are, and that's the next step, okay? Uh, so I transcended even from that spirit level of understanding who we are into what I call that universal blue space. Or, because uh, I'm a computer programmer, uh, I call it the universal database. Okay? So that universal database, at that level, again, you transcend all identity of who you are, in this case, as human form. You just are. You are as grand as the universe, and you feel as grand as the universe. Any, any, any knowledge, any information that ever was, is, and will be, you have access to. Again, that's why I call that universal database. You can materialize, you can create anything at that level, but again, you don't need to, because you are all that you are, you just be, okay? So I've managed to pull that reality, living from that blue space, down into this reality. Now, it took me about three, four years to figure it out, okay? And I call those the dark times. I mean, Jesus went through it, Buddha went through it, a lot of the people that I help go through it, maybe not three, four years. I can help you, uh, again, with people a lot faster because I've, say, trekked the path to it. But that darkness or, you know, dark souls, dark nights of the soul, is that what they call it? Yeah, so dark nights of the soul is actually, say, a separation of your physical identity here. Okay, that's what it's there for. You know, you come back, uh, again, living from that blue space, you come in here, then you get to start to see the incongruences of a deeper level of who you are. Okay? You get to see how the distortions of what humanity is, you get to see the distortions of society or what we've come uh, as a whole, right? Uh, all those distortions we have to pull away from. Okay, and that's why they're dark. Nights of the soul, because again, there's a lot of distortions here, right? Uh, not just in society or cultures, but interpersonally, right? Family values and th things like that. Again, you have to pull all those things. So after the four years, most of you see, say, this life reference uh, as humans reaching out for a spiritual, say, event 
to say cure you or heal you or bring you into completeness. Again, something outside of you. Does that make sense? Right? Uh, in this case, again, what I've done is actually understand that I'm spirit having a human experience or a physical experience. And that's where that 99% say of abundance or grandness comes through. So I live here walking on earth through spiritual eyes. And when you're living through spiritual eyes, uh, you see the total abundance. I see the brilliance in all of you. I see the brilliance in all of what happens, no matter what distortion uh, there is, okay? There's always a space to be grander, okay? There's always an opportunity, again, no matter what situation that you're in, uh, for you to allow yourself to go to a higher level. Did that make sense to you guys, okay? Again, most people see their lives, humans trying to have a spiritual experience. Again, the, real, the realness of that is that your spirits trying to have, say, human experience. And when you're at that level, because spirit is always abundant, like, like I explained, there's no sense of lack, okay? Spirit is always abundant, you're living from spirit, your spirit looks around, okay? Uh, and this is what I do, kind of in a nutshell. Uh, your, I wake up your spirit, your spirit looks around and goes, hey, you know, we're in a space of lack here. I'm not supposed to be diseased. I'm not supposed to be short of money. I'm um, not supposed to be anything like that, okay? Let's fix that, and then you start curing yourself. Does that make sense to you guys? Okay. So that's how this whole experience came about. That's why I'm here speaking to you on how to transform your life. Probably the most fastest or possible, easiest way uh, to shift. Maybe not the easiest if some people have gone through, because we go through a lot of distortion uh, in a short period of time. So let me explain. Uh, say monks or people who you know, uh, are in that path, right? They may take, say, 20 or 30 years to evolve to the higher levels, right? Uh, I can get people to evolve, say, sometimes when if, within a few months, okay? Uh, I don't bypass any steps, right? Say, for example, you're at kindergarten level, now you're at graduate level, you didn't skip any classes, okay? The same homework, the same process that you go through, okay? Instead of doing it in 20 years, okay, I help you process that, say, in months or maybe a year or so. That's a lot of learning. That's a lot of transformation for people to go through, and that's why it gets intense. But then you get, the rest, you get to live the rest of your life right, free and clear, right? at, and again, at an earlier age. So does anybody have questions before we move on, before into self-healing? Uh, no questions, no takers? Interesting. All right, <laughs> excuse me. So let's talk about self-healing. So what does that mean, okay? Uh, and I know you guys have tried a lot of things, you know, prayer, medications, uh, whatever it is, you know, counseling, uh, drugs, psychology, and so on and so on. And by the way, there's nothing wrong with those, okay? So let me give you an example on how healing really works, okay? So, and I'll, and I'll give you, say, layers, okay? The first layer is the physicalness of this world. So at that layer, uh, and I'll use uh, health, but you can, uh, you can put money to it or relationships or anything like that. So the first layer, that would be like Western medicine, you know, medicines, uh, exercise, foods, uh, chiropractics, right? Something physical that we do, right? To stay healthy or become healthy, okay? Uh, the second layer, okay, and it's a top-down model, so whatever happens above, you know, happens below. The second layer would be, you know, energy medicines, chakra systems, energy systems of the body, right? Uh, your auric field, so to speak. And now, you know, scientists are, are seeing uh, or actually have proven that, you know, the heart and the brain send out or emit uh, frequencies, right? About arm's length when I call your spirit body, outside of you. So those energy systems, again, those are physical energy systems. This is where psychic abilities uh, come in. This is where, um, well, energy healing come in. Uh, you know, where somebody works on you, you're shifting, say, a physical energy source of your body, okay? And, and again, there's nothing wrong with that, okay? So you jump into the third and fourth layers, okay? It's a bridge between the physicalness of this world Okay? And then, say, your core level, or you may call it your spirit. Okay? And again, so that's the difference, okay? or that's, say, 
the transition between your physical body here that holds density and then your spirit body, which creates, say, the programming or house, okay? Uh, your blueprint, so to speak, on how your life works, okay? So that's the third and fourth layer, getting your bridge into the fifth layer. Again, a no time model there because your spirit is, is endless, okay? It never dies, uh, it never is born, it just is. Okay? And that's your core level programming, again, your blueprint. Okay? If you can make changes at that level, your source code, uh, it's a top-down model, right? Your energy systems change, and then your physical experiences here change. Whether it's, say, diseases, uh, whether it's finances, or whether it's relationships. Okay? To give you an example on how this works, and I always go back to my favorite uh, example, uh, and some of you might have heard this before, uh, but back in the 70s, uh, Journal of Psychology, uh, they did a test. Uh, this individual, uh, he had two personalities. Okay? And by the way, I, I use that the story, not because it's the only story. There's hundreds and hundreds of stories like this. Okay? Um, but this is my favorite, because it's so easy. Uh, they did a test. The person had multiple personalities, uh, and the guy was at a hospital. Uh, and they, they physically tested him for diabetes. Okay? So he had kidney failure from diabetes, and he had distorted blood levels. So he's diabetic. Okay? He switches just like that to the next personality. Okay? So they test him again. There's no sign of kidney failure, uh, and his blood sugar levels were perfectly fine. So what was the difference? Okay? Nothing physical happened. Nothing physical changed. Right? Uh, say the hardware was still the same, but why does he not have, say, diabetes? Okay. So in that instance, say his experience, or, you know, I, I see personalities or multiple personalities from a different perspective, but again, he switches into, say, a different, say, spirit or a different space of his spirit, and that spirit does not prefer to have diabetes in this case. Okay. There's people who can see, even after having, say, optic nerve damage. They get stuck uh, in that personality, which is choosing to have sight. The optic nerve regrows, okay? and it's never been unheard of. Right? There's case after case of case uh, of, say, phenomenal or magical transformations. So, in a sense, that's what I help you do. Uh, Again, change your spirit level or help you awaken to your trueness of who you are, okay? And then your physicalness changes, no matter what it is. It's the shortest possible path route to you. So let me explain that just a little bit more so you guys understand it. Say that you guys are distorted, okay? Lack of funds, lack of relationships, lack of completeness, whatever it might be, right? Say that you're uh, like a beach ball or a volleyball, say suppressed underwater. Okay? Uh, I help awaken you or move away or push away whatever is holding you down underwater. Okay? And just like when you release that ball, right, it floats up to the top as fast as possible. Right? It moves any, anything out of its way. Does that make sense? And you're back at, say, a level that, well, you can actually float and live. Once your spirit awakens, uh, it's amazing how fast your life transforms, okay? So that's true healing. Anything else that we've done, and again, I'm not knocking anything down, okay? Whether it's medication, psychology, um, you know, chanting or praying. Again, uh, if it doesn't say release your spirit, at your spirit level, you'll still have the same issues, okay? So most of the situations or most of the, of the solutions that we do. Basically what we do is, is that we, um, uh, we create a workaround for the issues that we have, right? Like taking medications, right? Uh, to say numb the pain or whatever, but we don't get to the underlying cause, okay? Or what we do is say we suppress whatever distortion that we have, and then we hide it away, or we create a false image, and we create an identity outside of ourselves that nobody else can see. Actually, I see a lot of that in this group, 
Right? Uh, you, you have a lot of anger, a lot of, say, suppression deep inside you. Uh, and then, you know, you have this facade on the outside, thinking that you're okay. Or creating the world that you're okay. Again, but those distortions are still within you, so you can never, say, really heal. Right? Uh, and what happens is that since you're always, say, creating that false sense of who you are, you always have to take energy to create that sense. Right? It doesn't sustain itself. Okay? So let me give you an example, a clear example. Again, I'm not knocking AA down, right? Alcoholics Anonymous. I'm sure it's helped millions of people, but what they do is just through sheer willpower. Okay? They do a great job, but those individuals, and you've heard the stories, right? They go to AA, they recover, and then if they have, say, uh, you know, a, a drink, or they go into a bar, right? It all collapses on them, and then they go back. So why does that happen? Because the underlying program still exists on them being addicted, right? You're just changing, say, the outside level on how they behave. It takes a lot of courage, a lot of stamina to do that, okay? But, like I, I don't drink. So why, so I have a program that, again, uh, drinking is not necessary for me. So what if we could instill a program that you just don't drink. And that's what I do. So we switch that program, and sometimes it's almost instantaneous for people, and sometimes it just takes a little bit. The mic's not good. Can you keep talking? Sure, but I can't hold it like this. Sweetie. So it's, uh, really fun. She's trying to undress me here. <laughs> Uh, well, since I don't hear, how's this? Is that better? No? It has to be. Yeah, I suppose. Well, it's kind of high up. Sorry, guys. Do you want to put it up there? Uh, oh, how's this? Is that better? Oh, yeah. Sorry, guys. Check. Is it yeah. better? Mm -hmm. A lot better? All right. Again, guys, those online, sorry about that. Um, so where was I? Where? What? I'm sorry, what? <laughs> oh, so addictive type patterns, right? So anyway, addictive type patterns, right? So if you install that pattern or frequency, does that make sense, in that person, right? Uh, there's, no, there's no pain or there's no withdrawal effect, right? There's no, for example, people who smoke cigarettes, right? There's no withdrawal effects of having to have nicotine because the underlying source is gone for you. Same thing with, say, relationships. Uh, you attract relationships that are abusive over and over and over and over again. Right? Uh, why does that happen? Because again, it's the underlying frequencies that dominate you having, say, relationships like that for one reason or another. Right? So no matter what you do, you'll attract people who will, well, abuse you. Right? So if you remove that pattern of abuse, you'll start to attract people that won't abuse you. And I call that organic relationships. They'll help you say ascend higher. It's really that simple. It's really a lot of science or a lot of they, I call it math, okay? It's not about feeling good, it's not about being nice, it's not about being bad, uh, it's not about, say, having certain faith or anything like that. It's just as cold and scientific as gravity, okay? It's just, it's just the laws of physics that, say, demand this world to be in certain ways, right? Uh, I call it spiritual physics. Well, spiritual physics, again, much more stringent than the level of physics that we have here because over here, you know, there's, we can say defy gravity, we can do a lot of things, right? To distort gravity, to distort, say, electricity and all the other, say, physical forces here. But on the spiritual side, it just is. Right? You can't change it, you can't edit it, right? Does anybody have any questions before we go on? Boy, you guys are a quiet group. Yes? Oh, just wait a second. 
Um, how do you turn this on? Is this on? Um, Gary, how do you turn this on? Gary, you left me. Oh, you know, all you can do is... Oh, it's in the bottom. So with the programs, are you replacing the, the first program or the program that you're looking to, to modify or get rid of that, for that behavior? Sure. Or is it a replacement or are you just installing new and leaving the old one or how does... Yeah, so really good question. So, so let's get... Um, so, so the question was, so with the programs, am I replacing, right, or editing? Basically, I edit or, or delete the programs. <laughs> Okay, so how do I do that? So imagine that, you know, again, I'm a computer programmer. So imagine that you have source code running, right? Uh, and as I scan you, and this is some of my abilities, as I scan you, again, I don't, uh, I don't diagnose you or anything like that. Uh, but, you know, if you have, say, heart issues, I can, I can see it's like, oh, you've got heart issues. So in that instance, say, I see the source code that creates heart issues, and I go, oh, you have heart issues. So with that, say, scenario, I help you delete that source snippet of heart issues, and then you delete that program, okay, and you leave it blank. Uh, I used to replace it with things, but then that would be my judgment on how you want it to be. So I just leave it blank. It's a little harder for people to shift because they'll feel that emptiness or blankness come about, okay? But then they get to replace it the way they need to or want to. Okay. Let me give you an example. Say somebody's been abused when they were a child, and now they're 50 or 60 years old. Okay, uh, and I go, and, and by the way, I can scan you. Uh, I can scan your history. I can scan your family history. I can scan your past lives. Uh, I can see like in the future. Okay, so kind of like a psychic with abilities to shift or transform you. Okay. Uh, and I can talk about that if you want as well. The difference between psychic abilities and what I see. So, for example, again, you're 50, 60 years old, right? You've been abused as a child. So from that distortion, you see your life pattern, right? From a certain perspective, right? It colors everything in your life from that point on, right? So say I remove those years, maybe like six to 10, and actually it might be somebody in the, in the audience that I'm picking up. So the six to 10 years, say you delete those memories, okay? And people report back to me, and they go, Moss, I don't know what it is, but I'm seeing life as a six-year-old. And they'll come back, I'm, I'm seeing life as an eight-year-old. So what they're doing is that space is empty, they can't leave it empty, so they're actually like filling, filling it in Kind of like a movie, right? You're reviewing your movie, you didn't like the scene, you delete it, and then you re, re, refilm it. That's what it feels like to them. So although they're 50 or 60 years old, they'll see their life, their current life as a six-year-old, seven-year-old, eight-year-old, you know, whatever, to fill that gap in, okay? So it's much better that way. It takes a little longer, but it's much better that way. Although I can say, create frequencies for you, say of wealth. Because wealth has certain patterns, right? Uh, every successful person or every wealthy person has a certain pattern that they're run by, no matter who it is, no matter if they've, you know, done it, uh, uh, you know, the righteous way or, you know, hook and crook. Uh, again, they're all successful patterns, right? They're both the same. Uh, they're just using it for the wrong purpose. Uh, there's um, so let me, let me explain some of the detox because it's a great opportunity for you guys. Uh, even if I don't work on you one-on-one, -on -one, some of you, obviously all of you will start to shift and so on like that, uh, which is good. Uh, and then uh, again, so let me explain this and we'll do the meta-healing. So, um, so some people, like I said, forget to say, uh, forget to how they tied their shoes or uh, create, uh, you know, brush their teeth and so on like that, okay? So why does that happen? And that's part of the detox. Okay? And the reason being is, say for example, you know, when you're getting ready for school or whatever, there's a lot of commotion, there's a lot of distortion, there's arguments, there's fighting as you're tying their shoes. Does that make sense to you? Right? So what do you do? So every time you tie your shoes, it's kind of like Pavlov's dog. You tie your shoes and you get stressed out because that's what you're used to. 
So as you go through the process, I help you delete that pattern. Okay? Well, tying your shoes was involved around that space and time where you learned how to tie your shoes, all that distortion, so you forget how to tie your shoes. So you have to become really, really present when you go and tie your shoes, and then it creates, say, a whole new say, trajectory on how you see your shoes. And that's a simple example, but about, how about communicating with your spouse, or how about connecting you know, during dinner and so on, right? There's a lot of, say, strife. Uh, and a lot of arguments during dinner, every time you have dinner with somebody, s for some reason or another, you're not feeling that great. Right? Again, so that whole thing gets deleted, and you have to almost like relearn how to use your knife and fork. I'm giving you some extreme examples, but people have actually gone through that. Right? Again, just to recreate um, that scenario. So let's, let's do this, uh, let's do a meta-healing. And whether I touch you or not doesn't really matter because I'm not the one that heals you. Okay, by the way, I'm not a doctor in any way. I'm not a financial analyst or anything like that. Although a lot of people do transform their lives in a lot of areas like we talked about. Because I help you awaken to who you truly are. So the same way that, say, I got connected through a near-death experience, I bring that same connection to you, but without having that near-death experience. Okay? So again, I help you awaken your spirit to your higher self. Okay, and once you understand that, uh, you start to self-heal. So it's really about self-healing. Okay? So let's have you stand up, if you can, or if you want. So I guess I'll be working on, say, the front row here, individually. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a nice deep breath in. Just noticing where you are, noticing the space around you. And you'll see that in a short time, you can actually get into the deeper states if you're not feeling, say, those changes already. But again, just noticing the space around you, noticing how you got here, noticing where you parked, noticing, say, where you walked in if you're new to the center, noticing any of the details as you walked in, any of the nuances as you walked in. Okay? Noticing where you are now, uh, all the five senses. senses right? Noticing the light, even if your eyes are closed. Small deep breath in again. And this time we'll hit, let's try it again. We'll inhale through the nose, nice and strong, nice and deep. Okay. Nice, strong, deep breath in. Inhaling through the nose, holding it for a few seconds, and then releasing, letting go. Exhaling through the mouth, and acknowledging the expansion of your chest. And as if you've noticed, kind of slowing down time, right, coming into your own space. Starting to become aware of your body in reference to the room here. Another deep breath in. Holding it. <coughs> and exhaling. Letting go. Acknowledging the group. All right, since we all want a better life. Right, we're really facing the same direction or going towards that same direction. So it creates strength because there's always a strength and momentum in groups, right? So we take advantage of that. I call it the mastermind group. We take advantage of that to help us go further, help us break the bonds that we see in life. Help us remove, say, the shackles that distort us, whether they're people, situations, anything. Wonderful breath and again. This time asking ourselves, how do I connect to pure source even stronger? <coughs> again, that question, how do I connect to pure source even stronger? Nothing religious or spiritual. If you are religious or spiritual, it'll help you realize your religion or your spirituality from a higher order. And we're just gonna pay attention to your throat, okay, your collarbone. It's all you have to do, just pay attention to your collarbone. So while you're paying attention physically to your collarbone, on the back end, what, your source code, helping you release, helping you awaken, 
And let's do this. Whether it's physical healing, okay? Financial healing, relationships, okay? Just to give you, say the reasoning why, because a lot of you are new, we'll ask you some questions and you can see what pops up for you. Okay? Again, just to prove it to yourself. Beautiful breath in. Again, just noticing your collarbone, a few ribs below your collarbone. Let's take you deeper, just because we can, kind of stepping back from your life. Right? So we'll take it deeper yet. Uh, I'll help you step back from time. They will count down from 10 down to zero. With each number, we'll move away from time. Some of you might feel a little disoriented with it. Totally fine. Let's go ahead and take a nice, strong, deep breath in. 10, 9, 8. Go deeper, yeah? 7. 6. Separating you from the 1% and the 99%. 5, 4, 3, slow down time even more. 2, One and zero. Again, just notice how you're feeling, noticing your body, stepping back. Any of the problems that you have. any of the wounds that you have that you're trying to heal, again, whether it's financial or anything else or physical. Okay. Is it something that you've done in your lifetime? So are you the cause of the issues And if those who are saying yes, very few of you, did your parents, your siblings, other people in your family have similar issues, okay? And those very few, uh, let's just say you guys are self-abusive, so you blame yourself for the world's problems as well. So you're gonna take this on as well. So if that answer is yes, most likely, then you're not the cause of those issues. Let's go deeper. Is it an issue that comes from family lineage? Right? Basically, I'll have what mom's having. Is it an issue that comes from, say, previous lifetimes? Whether you believe in reincarnation or not. What was the answer that popped out? Anything that you've done to resolve this issue, has it resolved the issue? Other than what you're doing with me, but... Or like an awakening. Strong deep breath in. Again, just noticing your upper chest. And let's just go deeper. Just 
to noticing the ribs, top part of the lungs, going deep inside, spine. And just becoming aware of what you're made out of, whether your eyes are open or closed. ask you a hopeful question. Can this issue be resolved in this lifetime for you? Let's go ahead and take a nice strong deep breath in. And just notice whatever you're feeling. So if you could get to the core, whatever you're trying to heal from, the actual programming, if you could know where that came from, where would it be? Again, something running internally in you, obviously, but where did it originate from? Your mother's side, your father's side? Were you controlled by something? Your family controlled by something? Right? Hmm. Again, just be aware. don't have to do anything special. Just be aware. So if you could pull, say that wound out of you, just hold it in the palm of your hands. You can do that, say, physically or you can do that in your mind's eye, whichever way. What would it look like? What would it feel like? You can just hold it in your hand, the situation that you're in. And if you're using your mother, your spouse, other people, other situations, okay? Uh, let's go deeper into that. Some of you are going, well, if I had a different spouse, uh, it'll change. Not really. Why did you attract that spouse in the first place? Okay, so what's running in you? That's what we're looking for. Let's do this again. Let's go ahead and take a nice deep breath in. Again, noticing the top part of you expanding onto your shoulders. Your jawline as your jawline relaxes. <coughs> Is there a part in your body, let's say holding on to frequencies that aren't proper for you or aren't beneficial for you? Okay, what part of that body? Uh, does it resonate in? Uh, and just pay attention to that part. Let's put you down so you You can just focus in on, on, on that body part, kind of like a touch screen. If you touch it, how does it feel? Where does it originate from? And note what pops up for you. It's more than an imagination or a visualization. Basically, I, I'm, 
I'm giving you, say, admin level access to your core level programming. Okay? So I'm walking you through what I do for you. So where does that show up? You can read the storyline behind it. So now do you understand that whatever you're doing physically won't help? Beautiful breath in, nice and deep, just focusing in on that body part. And then this time, say holding that issue in the palm of your hands, just pulling it out of your body. And looking at it, just notice how it feels. keep running with that program. Again, you don't have to do anything else. Just be aware of it. Just hold on to it in the palm of your hands. Go ahead and take a nice, strong, deep breath in. Open your eyes, look at something inanimate, like the ceiling, the floor, whatever it might be. Again, bringing you into this moment in time. Just closing your eyes, back up. And then looking at whatever you're holding on to in the palm of your hands, and notice how it's changed for you. Notice that it doesn't have that control over you. Or maybe it has more control over you, kind of lamenting on why it happened to you, for some of you, from what I'm sensing. Uh, so we'll just kind of hang out here for a few minutes, some of you need to know, say, the reasons why stuff happened to you the way they did. But again, for a good number of you, it's like, gosh, let's just get it out and move on. Just, again, either way. Deep breath in again. We could do it a lot of ways. Let's just go ahead and uh, and do, say, a physical thing because we're physical beings. Just noticing that object in your hand. What do you want to do with it? How do you want to get rid of it? Right, you can just blow it away like a feather. You can push it away. Again, you don't have to do anything. I can delete it for you. You can just watch it disappear. Get smaller and smaller. Inconsequential. Again, overriding your say, control systems. Awakening your spirit's control systems. Deep breath in. Notice 
noticing the palm of your hand. Seems like it's empty or blank. Noticing the problem that you had. How does it feel? As I continue to work on you as a group, individually, as a duplicate, let me kind of explain. Do you know sometimes just the world changes once you start to see the truth in something, right? You hear the truth, no matter how good or bad it is, right? And you acknowledge that it's true, and then it's like a whole different definition comes into you, right? It's that simple. It's just a snap of a finger. And then your whole life changes, right? You didn't do anything, say, consciously, but why did your life change from that moment on, right? Why do you see everything different from that moment on? Same thing here. You get to see the truth of who you are, right? The brilliance of who you are, void of that situation or that filter that you've created. And then once you awaken to that fact, well, self-healing, self-transformation becomes effortless. And although I didn't work on you physically, but there's a good number of you might have had, say, lower back issues, kind of like from the middle row right there, uh, you'll see that your lower back might feel a lot better. Does that make sense? Wherever you are, yeah. So. Again, I didn't work on you, right? Physically, I didn't massage you in any way, but why did that happen? So ask yourself that question. So that's where, say, true healing, self-healing comes through, right? Awakening to such clarity or such honesty or such truth in yourselves that you void yourself or delete yourself of those filters that are causing your distortion. It's really all it is, right? Those time and space distortions. Go ahead and take a nice, strong, deep breath in. Some of you might not even believe it. It's okay. You can question it all you want, but again, bypassing your physical systems. Bypassing your belief systems. Just notice the changes that come afterwards. Not six months from now, uh, my ability to say get more potent. Probably the next hour or two for many of you. Next day. Let's go ahead and take a nice, strong, deep breath in. Might as well let it go, sweetie. Noticing where you are, noticing the space around you, uh, and noticing your surroundings. Opening your eyes whenever you're ready, feeling relaxed, refreshed. Coming back into this moment in time. Do you guys want a break or do you want to continue on? Continue? Thought so. Uh, <laughs> um, have a seat, guys. And again, we'll open it up to questions. And if you're new, <coughs> it's a great opportunity for you to ask questions. Okay. Uh, sure. Do you want How's to the room feeling to you? A lot lighter, okay. Uh, people who aren't, say people who are in your family, 
they'll actually acknowledge. Again, because, you know, I could say a lot of things and you go, oh, okay, it felt good, but whatever. Uh, but a, a lot of you, especially who are, say, don't believe, uh, you'll actually see people who are in your family, say, talk about that relative that have died. It's like, oh, you remember Uncle Harry? I was just thinking about him the other day, you know, like lately, or last night. So again, that'll give you confirmation that whoever was hanging around you is leaving. Or even if they're not hanging around you, the family paradigm, okay? They'll be leaving you, okay? So again, that gives you a safe, solid, say, reference or proof that there is things that do hang out with you. Uh, other questions? Oh, hi. Hi. Um, I've enjoyed everything you've said about the lineages, clearing the lineages and the templates sure. from other people's um, past. My question <coughs> is about um, what I'm doing to my children and even my new puppy because I'm going through a divorce and I'm not yeah. at my finest and I, uh, I have concerns. Sure. So the nice thing is that you're waking up to what you're doing, which actually say helps you retract what you're doing to them. Uh, and a lot of people run through this, and then we'll do a, a meta healing again. Okay, and then we'll do another one um, again to help you say self heal. So for you, uh, again, probably the work that we've done together. Basically, what's happening for you is that you're starting to see the patterns that you're putting upon your child or your children. Does that make sense to you? Which is a really good sign. But what happens is, is that, uh, how do I explain it? You know how some people are really, really helpful, especially mothers that are really over-nurturing for people? They're not doing that because of the safety of their kids, because they're doing that because of the security that they need. Does that make sense? Which is, again, kind of sad to say it that way, but it's for their own purpose, because then they have something to anchor onto and then what happens even worse is that as they grow up, they're assuring their death space because they can blend into that child that, when they die. And that's what's happened to you, basically. <laughs> Does that make sense? Your mom did that to you? Or yes, whoever took care of you? Did. Yeah, she probably did. Yeah, does that make sense? Because we were you? very close. Of course, you're yeah. very close. And if you pay, oh, that's a nice heart space, it's not. You, she just like blends into you because you trust her. And, and my grandmother just, too, and I, I welcomed it. I thought it was good. Yeah. But no. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> That's how they get you. <laughs> and again, they do it of pure intent. It's not like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be nice to her and love her and stuff like that so I can crawl into her when I'm dead. Oh um, <laughs> Cause basically that's what they do. But they do it out of, say, honor, because that's what you're supposed to do, say, carry the burdens of, say, your, you know, your relative or carry that torch. Does that make sense? So can I say goodbye? Yeah, and you being here, yeah, definitely. You're exiting that, closing that door, and then for your kids, you're doing the same thing, and you'll catch yourself, because uh, your abilities are kind of up and coming, you'll actually catch, say, those frequencies, like, wafting off you, and like wrapping around your kids, you'll probably start to see those or feel those. Uh, which is really cool to see and that'll scare the hell out of you at first. Um, but then you can pull that back. Have I screwed up my puppy? Uh, <laughs> no, she, he can clear up as well. Sometimes puppies are, you know, pets, they're helper animals. So they're supposed to be there to absorb. So, Thank okay. you. Um, let's do another meta healing, guys. And we'll go deeper, now that you're more aware, more comfortable. Uh, if you guys want to stand up, you can. If you don't, that's fine too. Again, it's your life. Let's go ahead and take a nice, strong, deep breath in. Again, since we've done this the first time around, it's probably easier for you to get into those, say, deeper states. More, more easier, quicker, uh, beautiful breath in again. acknowledging where you are, acknowledging the group, right? That mastermind group that allows us to, to really disconnect now that we're more familiar on what causes our life the way it is. Does that make sense to you? Are, you guys, are we all good that we really don't understand or didn't know what was the actual cause of why our life is the way it is? 
Can you all agree with me on that? Yeah? Okay? So now you understand where all those patterns come from. As I continue or generate those frequencies that help you shift, just noting or acknowledging the group dynamics again. Really bringing in, say, the purest or pulling out the purest essence of all of us, right, for a higher order. So basically, you're awakened spirit, okay? Coming together as one, creating a strong presence, like a helping hand that'll well, pull you out whatever distortions or ruts that you're stuck in. Strong breath in again. So I'm asking ourselves, how do I connect to pure source even stronger? Uh, again, that question, how do I connect to pure source even stronger? As we settle in. And this time, noticing the chest, right, your collarbone, your throat, uh, this time we'll go deeper, right, from the neck down into the groin area. And then in the third meta healing, uh, we'll go into the head area. But again, uh, from the throat down into the groin area. Okay? And what we'll do, well, let's just do it for you. Just notice any distortions, especially if you have pain, any diseases, anything like that, that you might have. Again, I'm not a doctor, uh, but you can heal yourself. Again. If there's any memories, patterns, distortions, abuse, sense of lack, sense of incompleteness, non-deserving, any pattern that's not you. Just acknowledge it from your neck down, okay? And we'll just even go deeper, just because we can. You guys are in alignment, right? You guys are a group. You guys are all, say, awakened and from the beginning. So let's take that momentum to our advantage. Space around you, arms length around, and below you. Okay, that's your spirit body. If there's any space around, say, that area, anything around that you feel that shouldn't be there, uh, let's illuminate that. Again, noticing the outside of you, noticing the inside of you. Are there things around you that shouldn't be there? Memories, patterns, right? Again, are they yours? Did you create them in this lifetime? Or did you bring them from a previous lifetime or family? Again, that's why anything that you've done before in the past physically, you haven't been, getting, been able to get rid of it, okay? So this time, let's get rid of it, because now we know, say, the source. Wonderful breath in, just noticing the space around you. Noticing what's inside you that shouldn't be there. <coughs> noticing what's around you that shouldn't be there. Noticing the distractions in the room. Again, focusing in on it. And then noticing your body within that distraction. Allowing those distractions, just like in life, to take you further. Right? Instead of distorting you. And there's always distractions in life. Might as well use them to take you further than distort you. And why don't we do this? Let's go ahead and take a nice deep breath in. We'll notice the head space as well. And then we'll walk away from all the distortions with the group. So just forcing you 
where a lot of layers basically do shed away from you. So noticing your head, right? Your forehead, your eyes, your nose, your lips. Your jawline as it tends to relax even deeper. Okay, and going internal, your tongue, your throat, your tonsils, right, your sinuses, left side of the brain, the right side of the brain. Okay, again, in the space around you. So noticing what creates you, your physical form, your flesh and blood, and then all those memories all the hurts, all the pains, all the frequencies that just resonate deep inside you, that's not you, affecting your womanhood, your manlyhood, right? abuse patterns, whatever it might be. Notice where they're resonating from. And let's do this. Just because we can, again, forcing you to clean out Lifetimes of distortion. So notice how old you are right now. Right, let's go back a quarter of that. So if you're 40 years old, go back 10 years. And again, just review your life. There's no judgment. Just review your life. That's all I'm asking. Okay. Deep breath in again. We'll go back half your life. And again, just reviewing your life. It's like my near-death experience, it's just a life review. Although consciously you might be seeing it from your intellectual mind at spirit level, I'm helping you see it from your higher level, again, the 99% that you are, okay? Noticing your breath, we'll go even deeper. Three quarters back. And then we'll go back to a time of, say, six years old. Let's have a seat here at nine. There you go. Let's go back five years of age. And again, no judgment, just a review. Okay, you don't have to go, this happened to me, that happened to me, I was abused there. And if there was abuse or whatever distortion, just note it. Okay? Four years of age. Three years, you might not have memories, but essences of what happened to you. Two years. One year. Time of birth. Again, clearing a lot of memories in a very short time. I think you guys can handle it. Okay, six months pregnant. Three months in vitro. <coughs> Time that you came into, say, that single cell or basically your timestamp, okay? That fourth dimension, as I call it. Basically where you jumped onto the train of time. The reality that you're in. Let me ask you a question now that you're back there, right before you got conceived. If 
you were awakened, would you have ever chosen the life that you did? So whether I'm working on you or not, doesn't matter. It's a little more intense if I'm working on you. So Again, I'm not the one that heals you or shifts you or any way. It's you awakening to who you are. Okay. Wonderful breath in, just noticing the space around you. Just going from zero all the way to your current time frame, where you are right now. Again, seeing how the story unfolded to the point where you are now. If you've noticed, there's nobody to blame. It's just patterns. Does that make sense to you guys? You're not saying, oh, it's because of my spouse, it's because of my mom, although it might be, right? You're just going, oh, this is where it came from. Which is a perfect place to be in because that's that place of non-judgment. Which allows us to separate from the identity what creates us, right? Those filters that we live through, which make my job easier. If there's anything else that you really, really want to heal from that you just, I'm sure it's in that package of what we're leaving behind. But just to make sure, because some of you are wanting something. So let's throw that in the mix as well. Just noticing the space around you. You're noticing your body. Noticing that you're kind of separate from whatever you want to heal from. Does that make sense to you guys? There's a space, if that makes sense, yeah? Again, that's the separation of your identity of who you are. Who you really are, the 99% versus the 1%. Let's go ahead and take a nice, strong, deep breath in. Acknowledging where you are, acknowledging the space, opening your eyes, connecting here. You have a seat and then, do you guys see a lot of awarenesses that's not really you? Kind of like a mask that we wear. Does that make sense to you, guys? Okay. So. So at 9.30, <coughs> uh, what we'll do is uh, we'll do a meditation to say release that with the rest of the group. Gary, did you want to say something? Or? Um, it's almost dead, but yeah. The battery? Oh, okay. Got it. Too, so. Okay. So <coughs> are you guys doing okay? We'll move on? Okay. Um, <coughs> so let's talk about emotions because that's a really deep part on self-healing, okay? Um, you know, there's a lot of books, there's a lot of information on, say, emotions, follow your heart, right? Follow your gut feeling, right? Don't. <laughs> <coughs> heard it through the centuries, you know, you've heard it in religious concepts. Uh, again, don't, right? Um, well, logically or common sense, 
Look at where your emotions have gotten you. Okay? Is that where you want to go again? And then we try it again, right? Because we read another book or we go to another seminar or class. It's like, yes, follow your heart. Uh, you know, you feel that love. Uh, it's not. It's not true. Okay? Uh, and the reason being is because the underlying programs that create who you are or your existence or your reality as you see it today, okay, those underlying programs uh, use your emotions as a tool to guide you to create that reality that has to exist. Okay? So if you're running patterns of abuse, your emotions are going to send you towards or pull you towards patterns of abuse just because that reality has to exist, okay? Because those frequencies exist. Does that make sense to you guys? Okay? Think of it this way. Uh, everything has a frequency, right? Gold, wood, metal. You know, if you put it on, on, on an, like an oscilloscope, right? For example, yellow has a certain frequency. If, you know, and people who can tell frequencies, I can tell you like spiritual frequencies. You'll go, people who can say, uh, you know, or see music on an oscilloscope, they'll go, oh, that's whatever the D minor or whatever they say. Or, or that's like color yellow, that's a color blue, right? It's not going to create any other color if it's resonating a color blue. Does that make sense to you guys? Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. So those patterns, again, your emotions are used as tools to, say, generate whatever you're generating or create into reality physical existence, whatever you're creating in spirit level, or your source code or your blueprint. Is that clear, guys? Okay. So what I always say is, don't trust your emotions. Can I can give you example after example, especially in relationships. Right? You follow your emotions, and then date after date, or right, pattern, people after people, it's all the same thing, just different faces, different bodies. Right? So, so again, you're following your emotions, right? Your heart melted for that person, you got attracted to the way they looked at you, or the way they talked at you, whatever, whatever. And then again, you get into those distorted emotions. Or stock tips, or you, know, you follow your emotions and then you lost more money, or whatever it is. Again, you're following your senses. So in this case, uh, let's recalibrate your emotions. And we won't do that here. Um, and the way you recalibrate, again, I can do that with you a lot faster, but the way you can do it, and it's good exercise for you, is to start to notice, say, where your emotions take you, okay? If you've been distorted before, right, or you run into patterns, say, of abuse or you attract abuse, note that what happens, okay? Note how you felt when you got attracted to that person, say, that abuses you or shortchanges you or stabs you in the back, whatever it is, okay? Start to see patterns in your life, okay? Usually, I see one, at the max, two general patterns that people run. All of their lives are created from one or two patterns, okay? Nothing more. Again, one or two patterns. So what that means is that um, um, say that, let's see, uh, let me give you a good example. Uh, well, I hate to use abuse uh, again. Say that you're always, say, lucky, right? You're running patterns of luck all the time, right? No matter what situation in your life, right, it demands that that pattern exist, so you'll get emotionally charged, right? Emotionally attracted to people, places, things that'll bring you luck. Does that make sense to you guys? I mean, it's that, say, mechanical. So just be aware, okay, of what your emotions have brought you, and then backtrack, and again, you'll see one or two patterns that generally run in you, okay? Just to give you another example as I continue, say, to work on you at a surface level here, uh, or at a conscious level for you. Um, Say, for example, a fruit tree, okay? What you guys do is that, say you have this fruit that's on your tree of life, you have this one fruit that's decaying or ill or, you know, infested, 
with worms, uh, and that fruit is your love life, right? Okay. So you try to resolve it, but then the other fruits, as you can see, are decaying probably because of the same thing, same disease, if you look at it. So, but this is what we do. We try to go, well, if my love life is perfect here, uh, then I can move on to my, my finances. Then I can move on to, say, my health. Then I can move on to my kids. So there's a lot of fruits. And by the time you fix one, right, the other one starts to decay again, because again, we're trying to fix it at a deeper, uh, at a surface level, okay? So what I do for you is I go, well, hey, uh, is there something that we can do at the root system to change all the dynamics of all the fruit that ever happens in your life? Is that clear, right? So that's what I do. I help you change at the root. And then what happens is that everything in your life, again, comes into 360 degrees of abundance, right? Everything starts to flourish for you because you're getting rid of so those one or two patterns, right? Um, do you have a question? Sorry, those two questions? <laughs> <laughs> My heart's so well for that because I didn't know we had epilepsy yeah. in our family. And I know what we've dealt with. I lost our nephew at 11. Sure. Uh, I mean, and, and is that something that's connected with energy that... Epilepsy? Happen? Yeah. Um, there's lots of causes for different, say, diseases. Uh, again, I'm not, uh, I'm not here to diagnose anybody, but a lot of times epilepsy comes when there's a deterioration from what I'm seeing, and usually it's related to, say, um, um, well, in your family, uh, from what I'm seeing, uh, uh, mothers who've taken, say, a lot of GMO-type type products during their pregnancy, uh, so what happens is it distorts. Um, the way the fetus or the baby grows. Yeah, our grandmother had a great grandmother. Yeah, so. It's come down to Yeah, and then once that's in your DNA, then it just generates, so, but it's mostly food-based. Uh, there's other epilepsies that actually come from time distortion, where, say, uh, that baby doesn't know exactly, say, what time moment that you're connected to. Like I said, your time stamp, right, that fourth dimension, you get a little distorted, and then it distorts, say, the nerve pattern. So there's lots of reasons why. But do you have a question, Sylvia? Is Prince okay? Is Prince okay? Yeah, I actually worked on him a long time ago. Yeah, he's awake. He's on the other side actually helping people. So, yeah. So like, we can talk about that, though. But go ahead. Oh. I was just uh, wondering, you were talking about time stamps, and what came to my mind is our astrological sign is a time stamp, if you will, and how does that affect the programming um, or the programs that we experience? Sure, so astrology, uh, again, uh, I, I don't know all the details of astrology, but you know, there's also, I see astrology as a footprint on how you got there, right? Uh, so that means if you were born in a certain month, yes, frequencies of the universe, it's like frequencies that are coming in through, um, you know, through that will, say, affect the way you see things. So I, I do believe in that. But does that mean just because your sign says X, Y, and Z, you'll always be that way? No, it basically means that you have a default of how you're going to be, you have the opportunity to remove your defaults or remove, say, the filters that you see your life through, right? You even have to a level, and people, again, transcend, like people like Jesus, right? Where they remove themselves of all identity of being human. So they actually don't die, they just, like, say, transcend into their higher space. Again, those are all filters that we see ourselves, right? A filter of being human, that's still a filter, not our true self. Okay. Uh, let's talk about Prince for a little bit. Um, so, <clears throat> again, because he's a hometown guy, uh, and I love the guy. Actually, I only, I only live a couple miles away from him, so, in Chanhassen. So. Um, so anyway, he, and I'll just make it short. So basically, you know, when he's in his, say, early days, 
right? And a lot of people do this, they get really egotistical or want something so bad that basically they go, well, and I did a podcast on this that goes deeper. Uh, they go, they want something so bad, they'll go, well, you know, I'll do anything to have fame and fortune, right? And something comes in and it goes, okay, uh, you're on. Uh, and then they think, you know, and they agree or they create that contract. Right? Some of you, again, might have not done it yourself, uh, but I'll explain the details and I'll explain how that affects you as well, because some of you who are, have intuitive abilities uh, are being distorted by exactly the same thing. Okay? So for example, in Prince's case, uh, and by the way, he's all right telling the story because it helps a lot of people, that's why. So basically, uh, in his younger days, he signed a contract. Okay? And basically what that contract normally says maybe in different words, but basically what it says is like, uh, I'll give you fame and fortune, uh, and then we just want a piece of your spirit or soul. And then people go, yeah, sure, okay. And then people like, like Prince or other people, right, like the Kennedys or anybody else, they go, you know, that's not really real because it's not substantial, but it's real, <coughs> right? They go, well, when I die, I'll get out of the contract, so it doesn't matter. So it's like you're fooling them and no, they've got you. You know, it's not like something you can get away from. So as he, say, ascended into stardom and so on, he got more and more brilliant, okay? Because he's that internal guy. Uh, again, I didn't say party with him or anything like that, but he's more, say, introverted, more self-aware. He did a lot of, say, soul searching internally. So he awakened, right? and people do that on their, on their own. He awakened and he goes, oh crap. Man, this stuff is real. I really signed. So through his later years in life, did you, try to, did you notice that he tried to reclaim himself? Uh, and he did everything, right? He went into that spiritual bent. He went to, you know, he turned into more religious and stuff. That stuff doesn't help, guys. It just doesn't help. And, and that contract basically was at a certain age, you cross over and then we take you. So uh, anyway, um, so and that's what happened. So, but... Uh, as he, say, crossed over, and maybe I had something to help him out, you can, I can help, say, say, break away those contracts, or he awakens and breaks those contracts. As you're awakened, you can break free from those contracts, and then free yourself of that distortion. So that's why I see Prince uh, at a higher level now, really helping people awaken. Because there's a lot of artists that do that. Right? You're seeing a lot of stories, like you know, Justin Bieber, I don't know if you saw his story, and all these other people, they, you know, they're like demonic possessions and so on, that stuff happens. So uh, the reason why I bring that up, a lot of you in your family lineage, maybe not you, uh, probably signed the same agreement or of similar, right? Somewhere in your family, say your great uncle or whoever said, hey, you know what, uh, I'll do anything to have fame or fortune or abilities intuitive abilities. Or, like some of you uh, in that region, basically you guys delved, maybe not you, or maybe you, from what I'm seeing, you guys delved into, well, let's just do a little, say, Ouija board, let's just do a little, uh, little worshiping, let's just do a little of the cult type stuff, because it's gonna be fun. Uh, and it was fun at the time, but now you're bound by it. Does that make sense to you guys? Right? So, so, and that's basically the sins of the father, so to speak, right? That's what they talk about religion, right? The sins of the father. Somebody signed a contract to have abilities, wealth, fame, fortune, right? Uh, and then everybody below is affected by that contract. So, it just is, I see it over and over and over again, right? Whether you sign it or not, it just happens. So, by the way, uh, as people awaken, you don't have to sell yourself uh, to have fame, fortune, popularity, wealth, anything like that. You can do it on the brilliant side. It's just faster on the dark side because somebody else did the work for you to send higher to get to those realms of abundance. Yeah. So let's do the 21 days, guys. Uh, and hopefully we're all online. Can you check? Because then we'll get some angry people. <laughs> We're good? We're all in? Okay. So again, if you guys want to stand up or sit down or lie down, whatever's good for you. For those people on, on, uh, online, welcome. 
We're going to do the 21 days live with this wonderful group of people at the lake here at Spiritual Center here in my hometown, Minneapolis. Okay. And what we're going to do tonight is like walk away from all those patterns that we've worked on the past week. Okay. So again, noticing where you are, noticing the space around you. Let's go ahead and take a nice, strong, deep breath in. Again, for those people here and online, we've done this before, so it's easier, right? One, two, three, four. Just going into those deeper states. Just noticing, say, any distortions or any sounds around us, whether it's coming from my side, your side. Being aware, again, of the sounds, the lighting, the temperature, senses, sense, right? All tools for you to come here into present moment because it's happening present moment. Strong breath in again, nice and deep. Connecting to the group dynamics, right? The mastermind group, much more powerful. because We've got a, uh, well, a lot of people online. Again, noticing your breath, noticing the space around you. Taking that disciplined breath in. Asking ourselves, how do I connect to Pure Source even stronger? Uh, again, that question, how do I connect to Pure Source even stronger? And again, for those people here, I'll just walk you through whether you understand it or not. Okay, for those people online. You're good to go. So whether you follow through or not, it doesn't matter. Yeah, at spirit level, again, just helping you reprogram yourself. So as you know where you are, right here, right now, let's just open your eyes for just a flash, close them, just to acknowledge like where you are, okay? Because this building in this time reference is here. It's now, it's happening now. We don't have to understand all the concepts. But just know that it's happening now. You can't move away from that. Okay? It brings you into that actual coordinate that you're in. And just being here as a group, and that's what I'm generating for you, those frequencies, to push you in to the present moment. Okay? So as you note your space, as you note your body, as you note your surroundings, whether you're here or online. Let me just explain how time works as I help you prepare, as we help you, say, walk away from those distortions, whether you're online, whether you've been doing the 21 days with me, or whether you're here, kind of pushing you into, say, getting up to speed, okay? So right where you are is your zero point. Right to the right of you is your future. And it goes all the way to the end of time. To the left of you is your past. And it goes all the way to the beginning of time or some people, uh, you know, the original sin, the big bang. Okay, again, where time, space and time got created. In front of you, behind you, above you, below you, are all the possible realities that you can access at this time. So for example, instead of being here, you could have been out with your friends, you could have been having dinner, you could have been, right? Those are all possible realities or possible choices that you could have had in this time frame, okay? Obviously, it changes Say so your reference according to uh, the laws of relativity on what happens to you in your future events. Because okay? you're at a different, say, point. Let's go ahead and take a nice deep breath in. As you notice, say your head, your neck, your shoulders, your chest, your arms, 
right? The density of your body. Again, all the internals, your lungs, your heart, your digestive organs, your hips, your bone structure, your legs right down into your feet, okay? Noticing your spirit body. Again, arms length around you, above you, below you, if you're new to it. Just to, you don't have to understand it all again. It just is. For those who do. Okay? And just note all the things that aren't you. Those, those patterns that are you, again, what creates just your physical existence here. If you think about it, okay, within this time frame, there's a reality that exists where you are a lot clearer, right? free from a lot of those filters that we see our life from. You're healthier, you're wealthier, your relationships work out better, you're more youthful, you're more vigorous, whatever that you need. There's a reality. Okay? Right here, right now. So another reality that you may exist in. Right? Again, whether you believe in the science or not, doesn't matter. So out of those possible realities, right, is there a reality that is of your highest good right here, right now, that you could say go into? So where would it be? Above you, below you? behind you, in front of you, somewhere in between. Uh, and again, guys, just because it's below you doesn't mean that it's a hell space or anything like that. Right? Just because it's above you doesn't mean it's better than what's below you or behind you. But just note where it is. Just note how far it is from you. And then again, notice that reality that you're seeing and that you're sensing, okay? How's your finances? How's your relationships? How's your health, right? How's your spiritual connection? You can have it all, by the way. And don't limit it to your conscious, say, reality. Again, a deeper understanding of that reality. Sometimes those people, for a good number of you, you might not see the clarity of who you are, what you are, what you're doing, but it just feels good, all right? Because it's beyond, say, your consciousness of what could possibly be out there for you, that's all. That's why it's not clear. Does that make sense for you? So, okay, so if it's not getting clear, if you can't see it clearly, right, or so descriptively, but it feels right, Again, it's beyond your understanding. So going beyond your point of reference. Wonderful breath in again, nice and deep. Notice how that feels. And then notice how you feel in Com comparison to that new you. Notice how you feel. Notice how the new you feels, your new model. You might be looking more vibrant. Look at yourself in the eyes. Uh, again, a sense of clarity, purity. Look at what's around you. Again, a lot more clarity, maybe a beautiful blue space, so to speak, around you, right? Look at what's around you here. Uh, if you could, say, filter or see that blue space or your spirit level, right? Most likely, uh, I don't want to seed you, your thoughts. But most likely, there's kind of a dirtyish, slateish, blue type feel to you, right? So a sense of distortion. But look at the purity again on the real you, or that other reality of you, and then look at where you are. If you have diseases or issues or health issues, that new reality or that other reality of you. 
doesn't have it. Right? Again, it's all a possibility. As we take a deep breath in, notice how far it is. What we're going to do is we're going to send up to that reality, whether it's above you or below you, behind you, in front of you. We're just going to say transform from one reality into that other reality. So again, notice how far it is. We're going to count up to 41. So it takes me about that long to get you all pushed into that new reality. Okay? So by the time we're about 20, you should be halfway through that process. Right? Does that make sense to you guys? Okay. So let's go ahead and take a deep breath in. So you're a little fearful. It's all right. Tell you what, if you guys are fearful, imagine me holding your hand. And I'll guide you into that space. If you don't like it, you can always come back to your old self. Okay, just a test run. That way you're not signed into anything against the realities that you create. Nothing that I've created for you. Wonderful breath in. Zero. Knowing exactly where you are, that's your zero point. And then focusing in on behind you, above you, below you. In front of you. One, two, three, four, five. We slow down time. Help you disconnect from this reality by disconnecting you from your time stamp. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Just like I did in my first near death experience started to pull away from that essence. And again, leaving my real or my physical body, my reality of my physical body behind. Right? Pulling just our essence or walking away. 10, 11, 12, Thirteen. Fourteen. And getting further and further away and looking at what you're leaving. Fifteen. Sixteen. Seventeen. 18, further and further away. 19, for many of you, it's a freeing space. 20, we're halfway. Look at where you're headed. And notice it's got that draw for you because it's the real you, it's the closer version of you. Looking back at what you've left behind. That's something that you want to keep. Again, there's good things in everybody's life. There's bad things in everybody's life. Whatever that you need to keep or is beneficial for you will come back to you without any attachments or distortions, okay, in this new reality. And besides, you can always come back to your old reality if you really want to. Let's move on. Twenty one. Twenty two. Getting closer and closer to the new you. Twenty three. It's really the tipping point 
right? You're closer to that new sense of you, closer to reach it, 23, 24, 25, 26, 26. I'm scanning the room, whether you're here or online. Uh, 27, we'll just stop here for those people. And again, the majority wanting to go forward. Uh, why is there resistance for that quarter? Have you here? Okay, just note it. If that feels like you, then note it. If it doesn't feel like you, note it. That's fine too. Let's just push you forward. 27. Getting closer and closer to that new you. 28. A lot of that. 29 is guilt, non-deserving, fear, uh, retribution. Thirty. Thirty-one. Thirty-two. Thirty-three. Thirty-four. You're getting get closer and closer, coming into your new, say, reality. Thirty-five, some of you might be coming into, say, your spirit body, right? Again, space arms length around you. Thirty-six. Thirty-seven. Thirty-eight. Again, in your new reality, 39. Notice how it feels. Might even have that new reality smell. 40, 41. Can I be in your space? I'll lock you in. You're just noting this space. There it goes. Oh, Quietly just sitting in your space. For some of you, it might feel really good. Some of you might not know. Again, just like a new house, a new car, where all the switches are at, right? You might not know where all the rooms are about, whatever it might be. Again, just note that, right? It's something to get used to. But does it feel right for you, right? For most of you, it does. Some of you, again, feeling not deserving of the space. You know, if you've always been stuck in a one-star motel, hotel, now you're in a five-star, right? Maybe it feels uncomfortable, but it's you. Nothing wrong with you, say, enjoying the good life. Strong, deep breath in again. Again, noting that new you. As I continue to work on you, let me just explain some of the detox effects that people have. Again, maybe especially for some of you here, especially if you're new. might be such a vast transition between the old you and the new you 
You might get disoriented with time. You might be forgetful. You might get empty. Uh, sometimes you, we might get depressed if that's the patterns you've run before. You might get, say, suicidal. Uh, again, if those are the patterns you've run before. Uh, if you've been controlled, or say possessed, uh, whatever you call it, or cursed, again, those patterns might come up for you again, right? It's not because the 21 days or whatever we did here. Just think of it uh, as this, okay? You've always been controlled, possessed, distorted, abused, suicidal, whatever. Those patterns run in you. Uh, just think of me as that flashlight that shines all the distortions that you are. You get to see it firsthand and all those, those distortions that have been controlling you, right? Again, I've, it's not me that's brought it about. I'm just that flashlight that's showing you what's distorting you, okay? And as you see it, again, you'll probably run those patterns. It's your responsibility to consciously say, I don't want those patterns to control me again. That's all you have to say, okay? They're there because you have free will, right? I can't just push anything upon you. So when you see those patterns, like I said before, just say, oh, those are my old patterns. You might start to hate your family. Okay? You might start to get, say, uh, uh, irritated. Your family, your friends, your loved ones. Uh, again, it's not them. It's just that you've elevated yourself to a higher clarity. Basically, the irritation is basically where you were or who you were. Those are the patterns that are irritating you that you ran. Now you're different from it. Right? The nice thing about irritations, uh, say you'll get angry, you'll get frustrated. Again, those are all detoxes, okay? If anger and frustration uh, have been used to control you in the past, uh, your spirit will use anger and frustration to push you away as, say, a propellant, to push you away from those old patterns, okay? So, uh, in many, many other forms of detox. There's a good number of you that just say, you're free, I'm out of here, uh, and you don't care, and you just let go of those old patterns, because you're ready, you're just willing. It's about half of you here, okay? So, again, it's just dependent on how good, or how ready you are to let go, and how willing you are to accept on how the new changes come into you, because it's really not up to you on how you change. Uh, let's go ahead and take a nice, strong, deep breath in. Just noticing where you are. Noticing the space around you. Noticing your shoulders, your neck, your face. Opening your eyes whenever you're ready. feeling whatever you might be feeling, either relaxed, refreshed, ready to go, or very disoriented, dis distorted. Uh, by the way, if you guys are here, you're driving, uh, just settle into your car, okay, and not drive. So just be aware of that, because reality is kind of distort you. So uh, again, uh, don't meditate and drive. Uh, you guys can have a seat if you'd like. For those people online, you can hang on. Did you guys enjoy being here? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and just as a closing, guys, this is actually the first time we've actually done a kind of like a real event here in Minneapolis, my hometown. So, <laughs> so I'm giving back to the community. We'll probably do a lot more. Uh, you know, you'll see me around, which is really nice. Okay? Um, the one closing thought, guys, where you are right here, right now, it's not a mistake, okay? Just acknowledge where you are, 
just note, embrace where you are no matter where you are, and no matter how, say, devastated or distorted you are. Once you start to embrace where you are, it's really the fastest way to get out of where you are into a higher level, okay? By not running away from it, but just being point blank and honest about where you are, okay? Thanks for being here, guys. Take care, notice what you notice, and then notice the details of what you're noticing. All right, guys? Again, thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.